chemical equilibrium and the effect of pressure. In this case, there has to be a gas. And the reason is that of the three states of matter, only gases are affected by pressure. You might want to be reminded of why that is. That's because in a gas, there are large spaces between the particles, and therefore the particles can be squashed together. Whereas in a solid, or a liquid, the particles are already close together and therefore can't be made any closer. So here's the reason why only a gas will affect pressure. Only pressure will affect a gas. Now, we look at a chemical reaction involving a gas. How about this one? How about A plus B in equilibrium with two moles of C? Plenty gas here. Let's say that A is a gas. B is a gas, C is a gas. There's a problem. And the problem is, yes, there's a gas, but there's no difference in volume. The volume of gas on the left, one mole of A and one mole of B, two moles of gas, is exactly the same as the volume of gas on the right. And I'm afraid changing the pressure would not make any difference here. There has to be a reason for the equilibrium to shift. It has to be a, an advantage in shifting and there's no advantage here. Let's take a different reaction. Suppose we had a situation like this where we had, um, let's say, A plus 2B in equilibrium with C. Let's suppose A was a solid. Let's suppose B was a liquid. <coughs> C is a gas. What do we have here? Is there a gas? Yes. Now there may be no gas on this side, but that doesn't matter. Is there a gas? Yes, there's a gas. Is it a difference in volume? Yes. The volume here is zero. There is no gas. The volume of gas on this side is one. But we've met the two criteria. A, there being a gas, and B, there is a difference in volume. The question now is, can we predict what will happen if we change the pressure? Let's take a chemical reaction and see what happens. How about synthesis gas? Now there's a reaction which involves gases and might be influenced by changes in pressure. Synthesis gas, as you might recall, can be made by reacting methane with steam. This is something to recall, the steam reforming of methane. You may also recall the product of synthesis gas, where the carbon and oxygen form carbon monoxide and the hydrogens get together like so. So, gases abound. Let's have a look at the volumes. How much gas on the left? Well, one mole of methane and one mole of steam means they've got two moles of gas on the left. But there's considerably more gas on the right. We've got one mole of uh, carbon monoxide and three moles of hydrogen. So we've actually got four moles of gas on the right-hand side. You'll see that going from left to right involves an increase in volume. Now the question is this, what would happen if we changed the pressure here? Suppose, for example, we were to lower the pressure. What happens to a gas when we lower the pressure? Well, we give it the chance to expand. If we lower the pressure, we're kind of creating a vacuum, and the gas will try to fill that vacuum. So, lowering the pressure, we're encouraging gas to go to the right. It's giving it a chance to expand. Likewise, if we were to raise the pressure, what does increasing the pressure do? If you, if you squash a gas, what does squashing a gas do? Makes it smaller. Think of pushing the piston in a bicycle pump. The gas takes up a smaller volume. And in this case, if you raise the pressure, that would encourage you to take up a smaller volume. So, what we're saying here is, in the manufacture of synthesis gas, we want the forward reaction to be favoured. We can see that we're trying to go from a small volume to a large volume, and therefore that would be favoured by lowering the pressure. By using a lower pressure, we're going to encourage the gases to expand. Let's take another uh, example of, of a similar reaction. How about this one here. How about C7H8? 
plus hydrogen becoming C7 H16. Three gases. Again, the question is, how will this be affected by changes in pressure? We have to ask the question, is there a gas? Yes, there's a gas. B, is there a change in volume? Let's find out. One mole of this and four moles of hydrogen means we start with five moles of gas. On the right hand side, we've only one mole of gas. So this will be affected by a change in pressure. What would happen, well, let's put it this way, how can we encourage the forward reaction? How can we encourage a large volume to become smaller? The answer is squash. By squashing this volume, we encourage it to become smaller. We use a high pressure. So if we wanted the forward reaction to go, we'd use a high pressure. Likewise, if we were to use a low pressure, a low pressure allows the gases to expand, and therefore would encourage the reverse reaction. So in this case, a low pressure would allow a small volume of gas to become a larger volume, it would allow it to expand. 